Hello, and I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. I've got a new pop filter. Pretty excited. Let's take us. Hopefully this helps with some of the popping that some of you guys have let me know about. Today we're going to be looking at Rails episode 12. We're going to be looking at adding login or username to our users. So that way you can log in with either a username or email uh, and sign up with that. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a migration. So if you haven't already, Rails G migration, and then whatever the name of your migration is, I said add names to the users. We're gonna go ahead and add a column to our users table. The column na uh, name will be username. String, we're gonna index it, and we're gonna say it's unique. We're also gonna add a few more. These are for future episodes and just general what we wanna do. We're gonna add display name. So that way you can have a, a public displayed name that's different from your username for your users. We're going to have a slug. Uh, that's going to be basically a URL to make it pretty. And we're going to have a theme. So like dark mode or light mode and then a theme color. And those are both going to be integers because they're going to be enums in our system. We're not going to do those today, but we'll go ahead and just add them real quick. So after we've done that, we need to change a few things. First thing we want to do is in device here, down under authentication keys, we're going to change this to be login and then case insensitive login as well. In our application controller, where this used to say email, we're going to go ahead and have login and we're going to also add username for the sign up. We have more keys here. You can only log in with the login key and we're going to have username for the email. So why is this different for login? Fairly simple reason why. Down here in our user model, I've added a couple validations. Uh, one is to validate the email presence and case insensitive. Same thing with username. We want to have a minimum length of two on that. We could probably do different things than that, maybe more than that even. But down here, this is device specific things. We're going to override logging in with our username. So we want to have an attribute writer, so we have a variable here, at login. And then to, when we grab that value, it's going to pull either that attribute value that's been set, or the username, or the email. And then we have to override this method here, and that informs device to let it know to use basically the login of username or email. So uh, it's provided with warden conditions, device is built off of warden. We're going to duplicate those and delete out the login key. We're going to call a where on these conditions, and then we're going to join it up with the lower name, so uh, all down case, or the username, as well as the email. And if it matches either one of those with the login down case first, that means we found our user. Go ahead and update our confirmation instructions to just say welcome username because it's a little more friendly than welcome email. And that's really all we need. That's it for this episode. Now we're going to do a couple other things. Uh, we're going to fix our specs here to clean up some stuff. We want to make sure our specs are always working properly. So the main thing we're going to want to do here is down in our git JWT, we're going to make sure that when we're signing in, we're signing in with a login. So it's no longer the email here. That'll make sure your specs pass still. Uh, I've made another future change for uh, future episodes. I like to keep port 5000 for my uh, public um, front facing site. So we'll just use that as 5000 rather than 3001. And then we're going to go ahead and set up for the next episode, next episodes. Um, for the felt side of things, we're going to add a new route in our application. And so down here, we're going to add a namespace. So this is forward slash API, forward slash v1, and then users resource, which we don't have anything yet, but we will. And then a collection action, and it has to be a get rather than a post or put or delete. So a get forward slash API, v1, users available. And let's take a look at what that does. So this is the route we're adding, and here is the name. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if there's params, and if the email is present, we're going to say, we're going to check if this is free. So 
So we're gonna say, does this downcased email exist? And if so, it's not free. Next, we're gonna check if the params username is present and say where username params downcase exists. And if so, then it is also not free. Otherwise, we know that what has been provided is free. And we'll go ahead and return that. I've also written a uh, request spec for this. And so you could see it's API v1 users available. And so if we just do a get request against it, it'll go ahead and have no params and it returns at 200. And in fact, I've duplicated this twice. I don't even need to do that. Delete that out. And next we want to check and say it returns false if the username already exists. So I'm going to create a user with the name of test test. And in my code, this uh, object creator makes this name set to the username. So then we're going to say, we're going to parse that response out. It has over 200 resp responded, but it's going to go ahead and say that the value for the data is false. So down here. And it's going to return true that it is free. The username does not already exist. So we're going to create test test and we're going to send to test test two going to parse out the response again, still a 200, and we're going to go ahead and return true. We're going to do the same thing with email, and my email is just at test.com for my tests in my uh, object creator here, and then I'm going to do test2 as well, and again all of these are going to return false or true respectively if they are available. Um, one thing to note with this of course is you may want to replace test.com with your own stuff. And we might want to go ahead and maybe return a different status code. Uh, maybe it doesn't make sense to do a 200. Maybe there's a different status code that makes more sense. Um, for my purposes of my test and for purposes of this, I feel like 200 is fine. But you might want to go ahead and um, say not available or some other kind of response. So of course we can run that. Um, we run our specs here. A second, and you can actually see I just ran it above and everything works. So that's it. We now have a new endpoint to check the availability of a email and username when you're signing up. Uh, we'll use that in the next episode. And we went ahead and added the login so we can now log in with username or password. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and like, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.